But I do want to talk about taxes. But first, on the topic of oil and gas, subsidies. I want yep. to, not specifically just about gas and oil subsidies, <clears throat> any type of subsidy, any type yep. of government subsidy to big tech, yep. whether it's big pharma, whether it's big oil. Um, subsidies to me sounds very, very uncapitalistic and very, very socialist. Yeah. So yeah. how can we be in, like we are, like I said, we're capitalism on paper, but you know, the more, you, the more I look at it, the more I learn, the more I, 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 I kind of like go down this road. It's like, are we capitalist or are we corporate socialist in an oligarchy? Right. Yeah. And yeah. the example is, you know, people like to say that the stimulus checks that we got $1,400 over a year and a half ago caused all this inflation. But the government gives out billions of dollars yep. to oil companies. They give out billions of dollars to big pharma. They gave almost between 80 and and $100 billion to Ukraine, but yep. that's not inflation. Yeah. That's not no, no. socialism. It's only yeah, socialism you, you, when you give money yeah. to the actual, to Main Street. But you give money to Wall Street when Obama yeah. bails out uh, Ford. That's not socialism. But yep. when you bail out, when you bail out me in Hoboken, New Jersey, ah, oh, you fucking socialist. Right. So yeah. square that. Yeah. Sh- square that circle for me. How is how how are um, subsidies part of capitalism? Yeah, and and I agree with you 100. Uh, percent You know, from the standpoint, like you know, and again, I'm not cracking on green energy, but you know, we saw all these subsidies, you know, for green energy, and it turned out to be, was that the right thing to do? I mean, there was a couple of billion dollar companies that literally evaporated uh, when their solar panels didn't work, you know, whatever the case was. So you're right. It's a very slippery slope to come down to, but again, it's, it's, I'm going to flip it's, this. It's not capitalism. It's, it's, right. it's I'm, not free market. Yeah. I'm going to flip the script though, please, because what the movement that I see happening, and again, positive things that have come out of COVID, um, you know, we all of a sudden realize, well, wait a minute, why do we have stuff made over in China that's really important for the U.S. economy? Mm, semiconductors, IT computers, yep. you know, computers, and computer chips. So I think we got the wind at our back because Intel is going to be dropping a fifty billion dollar plant in Ohio, and all of a sudden you're seeing all these governors going. I want that. I yep. want that. I want that. <laughs> Who wants Which, jobs? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and so the good trend about it is if you drop a $50 billion plant in, that's just not Intel. There's so many companies that support it around it, all the way down to the employees that move in, the home builders, the landscapers. And, and so, you know, again, I think what's positive is we've gone from this we got to find the cheapest labor out there to, whoa, wait a minute, we got to protect our supply chain and how do we do that? And we need to bring these jobs back because they're technology Mm -hmm. jobs, which are very high paying jobs, number one. But number two, you know, again, like the point I made about energy, you suddenly realize that your national security is based upon your energy policy and your technology policy. Uh, and, And so, you know, you're right. I mean, we're a capitalistic society with, you know, the different overlays on it, but young people can, that are, you know, paying attention. And that's what I talk about all the time. You got to pay attention. Well, wait a minute. If that's what they're doing, that's a good thing. How do I position myself, you know, to take advantage of that? And that's really what it comes down to. I mean, yeah, it it creates jobs, but, you know, hopefully they're good paying jobs. Most, I mean, if if they're in the factory, probably not, but, you know, people up top, there's going to be a lot of good paying jobs there. But even like, how, how can you convince a company? So say, say we, we, we drill baby drill and there's a massive influx of oil. Who's going to force the companies to keep it in house? Because we're we're one of the number right. one exporters of oil. Oh yeah, all oh, the yeah. oil we drill gets sold. All yep. the oil we buy comes from Saudi Arabia. Yeah, well, at least yeah. no. I'm being hyperbolic, but right, right. So even if we drill, baby, drill, what's to stop these companies from getting a better price overseas? You can't. Well, and, and I think that's what's going on right now is that there's a a, a, a huge economic war going on that we're seeing play out. And if you look at the Saudis, I mean, a lot of people don't realize this. I mean, the Saudis are the cheapest producer of oil on the globe. They have all, yeah, they have so much oil. Yeah. And <laughs> you know how much they but, have. Yeah. But the Saudis, the real cost to the Saudis, the Saudis need like $120 oil to keep all of their economic and social programs going on. The Saudis have realized this, that this new younger prince 
is trying to accelerate, like they need to diversify their portfolio. And, and so, you know, you've got this economic race going on and, you know, as far as the United States goes, we got to pay attention. I mean, you know, who's trying to do what from an economic, you know, standpoint and where are they in the globe? Uh, but I agree with you 100% about, you know, for example, you know, and, and I don't want to sound like I'm centrist or a global centrist, but at some point, how much money do you give to other countries, you know, versus what you're giving here? And again, I think maybe this is going to be the political shift that happens the next couple of years. And this is a circle back, back to your generation. You know, you've seen all this money given out and you've seen the government give out all kinds of money. You know, how can we bend that spending curve? You'll, you'll never, you'll never pull how much the U.S. you know government spends back dramatically. But yeah. what you can do is flatten. I mean, basically, U.S. government spending has been a straight line up because of COVID and everything else. How do we it's get been going that up a bent? Far before that, too. Yeah, but but how do we get that bent? You know, to a flatter curve on spending, which helps with inflation. Uh, you know, keeps taxes low, et cetera. So I, I don't have the answer on that one. So. Yeah, well, Chris, I mean, these solutions, it sounds like it would be great for Main Street, but it's going to be bad for Wall Street because they make more money doing it this way. They don't, do they, do, like, we, we want this change as citizens, right. as a country, as a go right. rah, rah America, but they don't. It's not good for them. Uh, they, they, they're they profit Look, or, driven. Or, or how, how can we, as like as as policymakers incentivize them because right you know a pair of, a pair of shoes you can get it for four cents on the dollar overseas you can't beat that here we have labor laws right. like how do you incentivize American companies to not use overseas and do everything in house because in house is going to be infinitely more expensive. Uh, it, it is, but then I'm coming back to technology, and, and one of the things we haven't talked about is like some of the technology that's rapidly coming is 3d printing mm -hmm. i mean my friend has one. It's incredible the, we, what's that my friend has one he said it's incredible yeah i mean we are on the verge of mass customization and what i mean by that is rather than going on amazon clicking and buying something you might go on xyz website go i want that pair of shoes i want them in this color click 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 it's customized and it's at your door the next day yeah. and it's yeah. been made from an automation standpoint i mean that's that's what I'm excited about. Um, is that way you have something unique? It's different, uh, but the costs come down too. And again, you know whether it's healthcare that drives the U.S. economy and and you know a revolution in healthcare, uh, technology is a revolution. Uh, I mean, you know it's it's amazing. You know I keep telling people, uh, you, you know we have one of the most powerful you know handheld computers on the planet, literally yeah. in our hand. And, you know, you talk about opportunities, you know, you, you got, you have young people that can make 500 to a thousand dollars a weekend driving through neighborhoods, stopping at yard sales, buying something for 10 bucks, clicking, putting it on eBay or whatever the websites are and selling it and shipping it out. I mean, you know, again, I don't want to sound too Pollyannish, but you know, the opportunities that we have, I mean, yes, people are using this to record videos and TikToks and everything else like that. But you can literally run a business on your phone. iPhone. Yep. Now. Um, yep. And and so if you continue to lower the barriers to entry, mm -hmm. you have mass customization. You know, guess what? You know, the labor costs may not be that big of an input or a challenge for people. So I mean, I, I look at our own practice. We're an RIA firm, and you know, because of technology we can easily run a couple of hundred million dollars. I mean, even 10 years ago, that would have been very difficult to do, but now it's, it's, it's easy, so.